Welcome back to Angie's Pantry. Today is another video with hashtag jar it up January. I'm going to be doing a hamburger. I've got beef hamburger, a pound of venison hamburger that I'm canning, pressure canning up, and a, a small chuck roast. And I will bring you in and show you how I did it. Now in the video I showed you how I browned the hamburger and I showed you that I was starting to brown the venison but with the roast I just cut that up and brown it and put it in the jars too. So I will bring you in a little closer so you can see how I started it all together. Okay, so I am going to season my hamburger a little bit. I've got some granulated garlic. Put that on there. You can do yours any way you choose. I'm not going to add a ton of salt because I am going to add salt to each jar. This is white pepper. Hamburger and pepper love each other. And I've got some seasoning salt. Now I'll be able to make any type of meal, tacos, anything out of this meat that you would normally meet with, make with brown meat. Brown hamburger, I should say. Once it's canned. All right, I'm gonna let that brown up. Then I'm gonna add the liquid soup mix to it. And this helps get some of the, it browns it and it makes it a, uh, I believe it gives it a better flavor to the jar and takes out some of the grease. And I'm just going to kind of try to, and I did add a little bit of Thrive Onion and about a tablespoon of the Thrive Tomato Powder. Just because it adds a good flavor to it and only one pack of the Lipton Onion Soup Mix. So you just fill your jars to a half inch headspace, pack it down, and a little bit more to it, pack it down. And that's just pushing everything down in there. It's not deep leveling, I'm just packing it down in there. So now I'm at this mark. This is called your headspace right here. From here to there, that's called headspace. So you want to try to be right below that line, this line right here, that rim. I'm going to add a half of a teaspoon of Kochner salt, canning salt, whatever you choose. And then I've got my beef stock. I'm just going to use it right out of here. And I'm not going to fill it all the way up because this is still going to render some uh, liquid. So now I'm going to try to pack that down in there. And see, I've still got just enough in there to where if it renders its juices, it will. And I gave it enough space to do that. Now if you want, you could pack it down better with your wooden spoon lid handle, I should say. And that's how your jar should look like. Alright, now i got a little bit of white vinegar. You're thinking, oh my god, that's a lot of emptiness. It is, but it isn't. And the reason I'm using white vinegar to go around is to make sure that um, there's nothing on that rim to prevent that from sealing. And in the warm canner it goes. I put warm water in there. Okay, so I, out of that big package of hamburger, I got three pint-sized jars. Now I'm reheating up my pan because I got a pound of venison. So I'm going to cook the venison up the same way as I did the hamburger, but it's really more leaner. So I'm just going to do that and then um, 
and pressure can that. Now I have a different shaped jar, so I know which one it goes in. But I will flavor it the same way in everything. If I have room, I will also can up a roast that I gotta do up. And I'll do the same way. I'll cut it in cubes and then brown it and put it in the stock and voila. I want so to now I got a browned up a roast and put the beef stock around that. I did up the venison that's in the weird shaped jar and then the three hamburgers and then I had broth left over that I stuck there. So I've had that on a low heat the whole time. Now some people use uh, Vaseline. I use olive oil and I just rub it around. Not too heavy. You don't want it dripping. And then I do the rim of the lid with olive oil. Like so. And then you set it up arrow to arrow. So my arrow's here. Okay. And then now you go counterclockwise with your handles. Make sure that you're which I'm not. You want your level to be all the way around the same. Now you can use spatula. You can use whatever you can to keep that level. Tighten it back up. And then I'm going to wait for it. I'm going to turn my heat up and wait for it to come depressurizing right here. I'll have steam coming out. I want them on tight. Everything looks good, yep. Now I'm gonna put my heat back up to six to get that where that comes out for 10 minutes. Once it comes to a steady stream, I will set my timer for 10 minutes. Okay, my timer is gonna go off. And on your gauge, you got a 5, 10, and a 15. You can hear that baby going good. So in 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Now I'm going to set it on the 15. Just like that. And make sure it twirls. And then once it starts rattling and comes to pressure, here at the 15, then I will, and it, I do a slow rattle on mine. I don't do a real t -t 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 rattle. I do a slow one because I don't want all my stuff to evacuate out of the jars because you're doing it so quick. So, all right, I'll be back to show you the rattle. Okay, my rattle is just now starting to turn around a little. It's right at the 15 percent. See how she's working? And I'm at 15%. Here. See that? Okay. And then I don't want her going all crazy, but I want her to do a little bit of that. Now my stove, the sweet spot's between the 6 and the 4, probably about 5. So I'm going to do about 5. The sweet spot's between the 6 and the 4, probably about 5 on a gas stove. Mmm, not like that. So we're going to watch it for a second and see if she slows her rattle down. As long as she does that a couple times in a minute, we're doing good. Because the slower the rattle, the more mellow the stuff inside, the more everything cooks, the less evacuation out of your jars you'll get. So I started my timer. For an hour and 15 minutes. Because this is at pressure and that's working. And we'll be back when it's all done. So it came down off of pressure and I let it sit for 15 minutes. 
so I didn't lose everything out of the jars after you first take the lid off. Let's see how she looks. There's my hamburger. And I got it on my cooling rack. And come tomorrow morning, I will wash them. Second hamburger. With good hot soapy water and check my rims. Third hamburger. The venison. Here's the venison. Looks just like the regular hamburger. And here's that beautiful roast, chuck roast. Look at that, ain't that beautiful? So, I think it's a wonderful thing. And there's the broth, the beef broth that was left over. And then I did one jar of water because I didn't want the jars jerking around. Now I can tell in the bottom of my pan, oops, and I'll show you. I did Lewis Pro, uh, had some evacuation out of it. See how it's slimy in there? So that's another reason I use the vinegar. It's easier to clean uh, my pressure canner. All right, everyone, I want to thank you for stopping by. And don't forget to go check out uh, Lisa from Sutton's Days, Paul, Rule of Thumb, Heather, the Needy Homesteader, Mandy from More to Life, and Tina from Wilhelm's Kitchen, uh, the other people that are in this uh, collaboration. Big hugs from my pantry to yours. Bye.